Brandis, a government shutdown could happen if an icy standoff between Democrats and Republicans doesn't thaw within the next 10 days. Also at issue is raising the debt ceiling, and there's a lot at risk. Checks to Social Security recipients would stop, tax refunds would be delayed, federal offices and national parks would close, and the government would default on the nation's debt. And here to talk about the latest from Capitol Hill are Congressman Danny Davis, a Democrat from Chicago's South Side, and Congressman Sean Kasten, a Democrat from Downers Grove. We invited every Republican in the Illinois delegation, but none agreed to join us tonight. We are glad to have you two back here on Chicago tonight, uh, as always. Congressman Davis, I'll start with you. Where is the House right now on a bill to fund government to keep it open and to raise the debt ceiling? Well, you know, we've actually been at this juncture before. As a matter of fact, we've been here many times. And many times there's more said than done. But I think after all is said, then we'll get what we need to do done, which means that we will reach an agreement. We will reach a compromise. First thing we might have to do is get a continuing resolution. Sometimes we do that first shot, first round. Then we'll come back and do a real budget. Raising the debt ceiling, of course, means different things to different people. Some people means that you're going to extend spending. Other people think that it means that you have more potential to invest. And I believe that when you invest appropriately, you get a good return. Or the, or the way the best return the way President Obama used to term it was it's paying the bills that are already owed. Uh, uh, Congressman Kasten, is this going to be a party line vote to raise the debt ceiling and to adopt a continuing resolution to keep government funded? Well, it, it probably will, but only because it's important to understand that this is a political issue. It is not a policy issue. The Obama was absolutely right. Um, as one of my staffers likes to joke, the debt ceiling is sort of like, whose line is it anyway? You know, there are no rules and the points don't matter. The, we decide to spend money. We decide to spend money based on the majority of the House, the bills we pass through with the power of the purse. And the vast majority of countries, I think there are only two countries, don't quote me on that, but the vast majority basically say, once you decide to spend money, you spend the money. In the United States, we have this separate, completely performative vote that says, do I agree to extend the debt ceiling? The... To vote against this is to vote to default the most precious commodity we have, the full faith and credit of the United States, the reason why we're the world's reserve currency. You would destroy not just U.S. markets, but global financial markets to do nothing other than score cheap political points. And so it's going to be partisan because there are going to be people trying to score cheap political points, but there's no policy substance to this vote. It's just putting, us, putting the world on tenterhooks for no reason other than nihilism, frankly. And, 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 and Congressman Davis mentioned the fact that uh, Congress has found itself in this position over and over again, this game of brinksmanship here with the debt ceiling. Congressman Davis, so where is Congress on negotiations over one of uh, President Biden's key agenda pieces, that $3.5 trillion spending bill that encompasses things like child care and medical care? Well, I think we're going to be negotiating furiously as a matter of fact, I serve on the Committee on Ways and Means, where much of the decision originates in terms of some of the programmatic aspects of money that we're going to be using and spending. And I can tell you, we just had ourselves a great markup with some of the best thoughts and ideas being projected that I've seen government do since the mid 1960s. So, can you give I'm me one, one or two clear about, example? One or two examples of, of what you're talking well, about? Well, the, the child tax credit, the increase in the child tax credit, the increase in in the AOT American Opportunity Tax Credit, tax credits that will help us rebuild inner city America like much of what my district looks like. Tax credits for low and moderate income working families that will be able to get their children the things that they need to attend school. Increases in opportunity for people to have 
broadband, to communicate the way that we are communicating right now. All of these things are in the proposals. These are things that we greatly need, and I'm just super excited about the potential of passing. And Con Congressman Kasten, it seems like there is a tug of war within the Democratic Party. The progressive wing wants that $3.5 trillion. Uh, the moderate wing, wing thinks it's probably too much. And the progressive wing has talked about perhaps not voting for the infrastructure bill that passed the Senate. So what's the fate of that infrastructure bill? Well, first, Paris, it's important to understand that we need to we need to be clear about how we talk about this. This is three and a half trillion dollars of spending, which is going to be offset by a comparable amount of revenue when it's spread over 10 years. So, you know, the, the U.S. economy is about 21 trillion dollars a year right now. And we're talking about 350 billion dollars of added spending, which will be offset by a similar amount of revenue. Um, there is no fiscal reason to oppose this. What the debate is within the Democratic caucus on this is that we have the bipartisan infrastructure framework, which prioritized those things that could be done on a bipartisan basis, primarily roads and bridges. What that bipartisan fr framework did not prioritize are things that are inconsistent with bipartisanship, like looking out for children, like making sure everybody has access to health care, like dealing with the climate crisis. I wish those things weren't. Are, are you saying you might be a no vote on that infrastructure bill unless those things are put in there? What I'm saying is until I know what the whole package is, I don't know what we're voting on. And I know that we owe it to our children, to the people we represent, to do what is necessary, to do what's scientifically necessary. And so we're trying to push to make sure we, our whole caucus, not like the, this wing or that wing, we're trying to make sure that what we vote on when this comes through is sufficient to the needs of this moment and is fiscally responsible. And, and I think what's hard for a lot of people to grapple with is if we pass the bipartisan infrastructure framework in the House and we are left trying to guess what the Senate will subsequently do with what we might pass, that's a big bet. And I think folks are, folks are very supportive of both of those bills, but they're trying to understand how do we make sure that we come up our voters in the eye and say, we did what you asked us to do so, in the moment when we had the vote. So it seems like, it's seems, a, it seems like uncertainty. It's a tense uh, uh, uncertainty on a lot of uh, President Biden's agenda. Congressman Davis, there are fears within the Democratic Party that uh, much of uh, Biden's domestic agenda is going to go by the wayside from climate change to the $3.5 trillion bill to voting rights. What of these things do you think is going to get done? Well, I, 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 I think that Representative Catherine was so correct when he talked about things that have been proven to work and things that we know, the scientific realities of what we need to do. You know, I drove down to New Orleans, Louisiana two weeks ago, and if you had to go across some of the bridges and see the water and see the destruction and see what was needed just to respond to some of the crisis needs that exist, then you will see this a different way. And you look at it in a different way. And you're, and you're talking about investing. There, and I'm sorry, Congressman, to cut you, but you're talking about a, a funding bill, a spending bill would include aid for New Orleans and, and other areas hit by uh, natural disasters recently. And I'm sorry, we have to leave it right there. Our thanks to Congressman Danny Davis and Sean Kasten. Thanks, as always, for joining us. Thank you, Bruce. All right, it's a pleasure.